you know, looking at trade and tariff, obviously the 25% China tariffs are still largely in effect with a few exceptions and things that have been uh, been removed. Um, I know there's a lot of questions now on with, with obviously a new um, president and in, in system in place, uh, if those are going to stick around or, or be removed. Um, is that something you guys are still keeping a close eye on and spending a lot of time on with those with those tariffs? And what's kind of the outlook on whether those will expire or, or be removed or if you think they're around for the long run? Yeah, we, we definitely are still very involved in that. And we were hopeful that with the new administration, there might be a change of approach. And as of a few months ago, there was talk that there might be some relief on these tariffs. But over the past few weeks, that seems to have stopped. So as from what we can tell, for the foreseeable future, the tariffs will be in place. Um, what we're working on now is trying to get a more expedited and clear exclusions renewal process. As you noted, some some substances, chemicals have been excluded from the tariffs, and but it's it's really convoluted to how to even get those exclusions granted and and how to get them renewed. So that's kind of where our focus is right now. And then even as of just yesterday, we filed comments with the International Trade Commission. They had requested comments on the economic impacts of both the China Section 301 tariffs and the um, the Section 232 tariffs. So we filed comments. Um, about uh, the the 301 tariffs and the impact they've had on the the chemical distribution industry. Yeah, it's something we've we've obviously been impacted by. Some of our couple large products for us have been subject to the taxes. These products are only produced in China, so we have no mm-hmm. choice but to bring them on. Companies need the product and you know pay the 25 percent extra, and then that obviously just gets passed on to the downstream pricing. Um, and there's a lot of questions, you know, that product has once or twice been put on the exclusion list, so then it's no longer subject to taxes or the tariff, but then do you get the tariff back? Do you not get the tariff back? If you got multiple loads coming in in a month and the exclusion comes into effect, is one load subject to it? Is one load not? Are we getting refunds? Are customers getting refunds? All <laughs> kinds of fun questions, you know, on the sales side, we've been asking, you know, hey, we want our 25% back. What's like, well, you know, it's not that simple. I know there's a lot of cases we haven't even gotten the, you know, the money back, even if it is subject to it. So it's it's uh. been... Uh, it's been a fun, fun project the last couple of years, keeping an eye on that and understanding how that works and, and you know, being able to accurately answer customer questions. Yeah, it's been keeping uh, the customs consultants and, uh, and attorneys busy. <laughs> I can imagine so. I can imagine so. <laughs> um, so it sounds like maybe that's not a, not a current priority for the administration. Looking at that, maybe, maybe removing that at this point, something that is kind of on the back burner a bit. Yeah, there's been a lot of talk about it, but have not seen much action and don't don't really see it coming, unfortunately. Yeah. Okay. Well, something I'm sure we'll keep an eye on, but it's uh, certainly good good feedback to hear what you guys are seeing on that. I know there's always articles that'll come out and questions, and that brings up a whole other batch of questions from customers saying, "Oh, I heard it's getting removed or whatnot." So it's it's good to hear that. You know, I mean, not good to hear, but it's it's good a good update that it's kind of on the back burner and hasn't really been talked about here in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, and if we hear anything different, we'll certainly let the membership know. 